I was listening to this atheist talk show about a year ago now. And the point of the show was there were like three or four atheists that sat in a room and then people would call into their show. And most people that are calling into their show were Christians. And what broke my heart about listening to the show is that the people that were hosting the show didn't really seem like they cared about having an honest discussion. Instead, they wanted to find the dumbest Christians they could and just win an argument or debate with them, making them look stupid. It didn't seem like they had any compassion or even really cared about the, about helping other people. Quite sad. And one of the ways they stumped up a Christian and made him look stupid was they said to him, if God's so perfect and God's so good, then why are there two covenants? Didn't God mess up? God said, if you just offer sacrifices to me, then I'll be happy. But then why did Jesus have to come? And the Christian, he didn't really have a good answer for it. But I honestly don't even like the premise of the question. It's saying that God's purpose in creating a sacrificial system to him was to be the finite thing of us connecting with him. When in reality, the whole purpose of the Mosaic law was to show our sin within us. The Apostle Paul talks about this very deeply. And so to, I want to set the stage with you a little bit and help you get a better understanding of sacrifice. And then I'll answer that question that he asked the Christian of why did there need to be multiple covenants and why did Jesus have to die if they were offering sacrifices already? So the first animal sacrifice was right after Noah got off the ark at the very beginning of Genesis. So he gets off the ark and he built an altar and he sacrifices an animal. And during those days, sacrifice was quite common. We read it as modern readers and think, think of it as kind of barbaric. But during these times, the basic idea goes, maybe if I go and offer a sacrifice for them, they'll at least get some meat and then they won't want to kill me. So they're actually physically eating the sacrifice. And then it developed a little bit with Judaism where it was God is perfect and he's holy. And so because of that, he can't be around sinful people. So he has to kill me. So maybe if I go and offer some sacrifices in my place, God's not physically eating them, but it will satisfy this need for him to kill me. But the true purpose of the sacrificial system was always to pay for the sins of the past. If you read the Leviticus, most of the sins that are needed for sacrifice are sins that are incidental. There's rarely sacrifices that are set up for purposeful sinning, which is something that I do every day in my life. The real biblical viewpoint of sacrifice is we turn away from sin and we turn to a holy God. But the problem is, is that we can't be in his holy presence because of our sin. See, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. God owes us death for our sin. So we need something to stand and take our death if we want to be in God's presence. So he used the sacrificial system to show our shortcomings and then demonstrated that through Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, we could be with him forever. That's why Christians don't sacrifice today. Jesus paid for the sins of yesterday, today, and forever. See, animal sacrifice was meant to show the seriousness that God took sin and therefore would make us understand the true seriousness for Jesus dying for us. In Hosea 6 through 7, chapter 6, 6 through 7, it says this, I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt, offer burnt offerings. But like Adam, you broke my covenant and betrayed my trust. See, according to God, this atheist can't even count to three properly. In Hosea, he's saying that his first covenant was with Adam. His covenant was, don't eat from the tree of good and evil. Don't eat from the tree of knowledge. And then I'll walk with you every day. You'll be in my presence. You'll live a perfect life. And then Adam broke that covenant. He makes another, another covenant with the people of Israel through the Mosaic law, which is saying, if you hold up this law perfectly, then I'll walk with you and I'll bless you. But if you don't, then I'll turn away from you. And then his final covenant was with Jesus. The first two covenants showed the shortcomings of man. The final covenant with Christ showed the magnitude of mercy that God offers us. See, God had a plan before we had a problem. The cross was not God's plan B. He didn't go, oh, wow, people are really messing up. I wonder what I should do next. 
Instead, we can see the miracle and the necessity of the cross from the beginning of Genesis all the way through the Old Testament. In Hosea 8, 13, it says this, The people love to offer sacrifices to me, feasting on meat, but I do not accept their sacrifices. I hold my people accountable for their sin. I will punish them. They will return to Egypt. Now remember, God brought them out of Egypt. So that's like saying he's going to cast them back into this evil place that they were in. And the importance of this is it's saying that these animal sacrifices are not working. They're not working. They weren't intended to be. God is not saying, oh, there's a big problem here. He's saying the problem still exists. The animal sacrifices have not solved it. And that was what Jesus was needed for. I think when you just sit here and you criticize God and all of his wisdom and all of his might saying, oh, God messed up one, two, three times, can't trust him. Instead of stepping back out and looking at the beautiful nature of the Bible and God showing over generations the need for the cross, and then he fulfilled that need in himself when he died. for. It. Anyways, I hope this gives you a better perspective on understanding the cross and its necessity and also some animal sacrifice things. If it did, then be sure to leave a like on this video as it really does help. And I'll see you back here later as we continue to read through scripture together.